Hello everybody, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls. I'm going to be talking about angelic messaging for the year 2024. This is the final year in a destruction phase. And so there are some things that we need to discuss, we need to look at. Uh, if you didn't watch my 2020 to 2024 video, I think it's like right on the main page, it should be at least. So go back and watch that. But this 2024, the messaging that's coming through is nothing will ever be the same. Nothing will ever be the same. And this goes beyond the pandemic. This goes, this is crazy to say, but it goes even beyond war. War is the effect, right? War is the culmination of our hatred and our insecurities and our fears playing right out in front of us. Trying to find answers and thinking that we found answers in an enemy. And that's not the answer. It just redirects your focus. I'm already experiencing this. I'm recording this. I believe today's November 10th. It's 10th of 2023. <laughs> uh, and the past week has already been bizarre. And I'm going to offer these as examples because this is the sort of thing that's leading up to 2024. I had somebody enter my home and that was a whole thing. Uh, it wasn't, I don't know if you would call it breaking and entering. Um, the person saw that I was home and then when I went into my backyard, let themselves in the front door. So that was disturbing on several levels. That situation had a lot of nuances to it, but I'm not going to go into that here. Then, if you guys don't know, I, I moved from Colorado to Ohio, and then I went to go get my... Now I've never experienced this in my life, so hang with me. This is what I'm talking about as an example of weird stuff. Anytime I've ever lived in another state and I'm transferring car title, get my license, getting my car registered in that new state... You go into a DMV, right? You take a number. The worst part is sitting there waiting 20 minutes. I got very lucky in Colorado. It was only a 20-minute wait. Uh, and then everything was handled right then and there within an hour. Title transfer. Click the little photo for your license. Okay, here's your registration. Plates, you know, all of that. This time, coming into Ohio, first of all, they call it BMV, Bureau of Motor Vehicles. Because Ohio just needs to be different, I guess. I don't know. Does it is it that for your state if you're in the United States? Is it that? I don't know. Is it DMV or BMV? Comment down below. But I went to, I had to go to a separate title office. Wait, like I've never had to do that before. <laughs> never. But I've always lived in bigger cities. So maybe it's different. I had to go in and of course everything is done electronically where I came from. So that's how I had my title. They said, that's not good enough. We need it directly and official, official from Colorado. So you're going to fill out this form. We're going to fax it over. And the woman comes back and she goes, now it'll take about 30 days to transfer this. Because why? What? Because I know it's not Colorado. Colorado will send that out immediately. I was already in touch with somebody, at, you know, handling that in Colorado. They're on it right now. And it doesn't take 30 days to even drive that across the country. <laughs> so why does it take 30 days? But okay, that's not even the weird part, y'all. So then I go over to the BMV and uh, they're trying to get me my license, but I'm from here. So uh, in my teens, I had a driver's license here in the state of Ohio. And that was the 90s, right? So something about the all the old information, bringing it over to the new system, files got corrupted. Well, this made it so that in order for me to get a, an Ohio driver's license, I had to be under investigation. You guys, they confiscated my passport, <laughs> all my documents, including my my passport, and when and didn't even tell me that they what they were doing. They just like took the picture, and I said, okay, I just need my documents back. And she said, oh no, I hang on to that until the investigation is done. More information, please. What are you talking about investigation? Well, we have to, I, there was no good explanation. And I walked out of there without my passport, not knowing what the heck was going to go on. A couple hours later, I get this text 
from the investigator. <laughs> See how I said weird? This is weird. And the guy's like, hey, yeah, obviously everything's fine. You can come on back and get your documents. Yeah, don't mind me. Like, I don't have enough things on my plate to take care of. Cool. I'll come back. It was the third time because I had, it, there was a lot there. I had to go get another document, um, my point of sale for my car and bring it back. It was a whole thing. So I went back in. I get my documents. And they finally tell me, oh, the the photo from your original, back when I was a teenager in the 90s, right, um, that photo was corrupted. And I, I, I didn't really understand, I guess, to make sure I wasn't a, a scammer or something. They had to investigate further before they can give me a license. So that's an example of tediousness. Number one, get ready for this. This is going to be the type of thing. This is on the minor end of things for 2024. Tedious. Feeling like, and I've gone through this so much in the past few months, communicating and someone, it's not landing. It's not landing. Now, people might make jokes about that and be like, People are crazy or people are just off in another world. No, it's not that. Something else is going on here. Something else is going on here where literally um, it's like people's brains have been wiped. Oh, man, this, this is sci-fi. You ready for this? Or maybe not sci-fi. Um, it's like their brains have been wiped. And unless it's the appropriate coding coming in, they can't understand it. Or memories, short-term memory. No, you don't have to have something going on with your brain. This has been going on for a lot of people. Someone just told you some information and you couldn't process it. We're going to be seeing more of that coming in 2024. You might feel it affecting you directly. You might be feeling like, I, I just, what, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm doing this now that I'm getting older. I walk in the room and go, what the heck did I come in here for? Now, yes, that could be <laughs> your brain aging, sure. But I think it's also being overwhelmed and taking on way too much. Why is there such a, like a, a huge occurrence of ADHD all of a sudden? Now, some of that will be awareness, but it's also a very different life now. I think this is the final collapse of a lot of institutions that need to go. Now, the esoteric art I do is not necessarily future predicting. There are people who do that. And as long as they're ethical and it doesn't interfere with your human free will and it's not fear mongering or anything like that, it's just informational. As long as they're ethical and tell you that you have the power to change <laughs> the outcome, you know, then that's cool. But I, I did feel the need to sit here and in this 2024 year overview, give you a heads up. We're already seeing financial institutions collapsing that I believe, I don't remember if it was in the 2020 to 2024, I recorded that four years ago. So um, I, I may have mentioned that in there, banking systems completely collapsing and people going into a big panic. And, you know, I know there are preppers out there and when push comes to shove, yeah, we, we want people who know how to live off the grid to help us, right? Um, but that can also get into playing into fear a little bit as well. So not to panic. You see what I'm saying? Like not to panic, not to do all that. Um, but if something should occur, if it does shake down in 2024, remember when it, we're talking about angel communication here, time is not linear for them. And we have a whole humanity that's contributing energy into the outcome. And so that means things could change. I feel like it might go into 2025. Tying up loose ends before we can start sort of rebuilding. And it really is contingent upon free will choices of people who are not even functioning from um, any sort of pure place. I don't know what else to put around that. But as 2024 approaches, one, watch for really strange occurrences. Confusion. Confusion. I've heard from so many people strange things occurring and them having no rhyme or reason as to why it happened. There is a scrambling in our brain. There's probably, there's a, there's an attack that's already underway and has been underway and it has to do with electromagnetic frequencies and how we as organic beings respond to that. Of course, that's been going on. You roll your eyes, what? 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's been happening already. And then there is uh, this thing around, like I said, financial institutions uh, crumbling. Uh, you know, all the stuff you've already heard, cyber attacks, electrical grid attacks. These have already been attempted numerous times, numerous times. Hang with me here. If you're one of those people who goes, oh, this is so negative, I guess. Do you know how destructive you are? Guess what, princess? You don't get to act like that anymore. Stop bringing it down for the rest of us, okay? We're not pulling your weight. And that's a message to other people who have pulled the energetic weight for other people. Time to snippy snippy that thing. Let them do whatever they're going to do. Well, that's not very nice. Neither is dragging everybody down because you're too precious to look at anything. You're in this human body. Now, listen, hey, yo, I'm not talking about people who are in a depressed, a depressed state or you're going through a hard time yourself and you're trying to just process it. I'm not talking to you. Okay. Take care of you. You do whatever you got to do. I'm talking about, you know, the types, <laughs> the, they're basically the ones who think they got life down and, um, they're not actually, they're going to so reincarnate. I'm telling you, like, they're going to have to come back and learn all this all over again. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I, I feel like if, uh, if that's a thing, if we got a choice to not come back in here, I'd come back in here. Hey, hey, hey. I don't know. Can, can we just hang out on the other side? I don't know how that works. I don't remember. But, <laughs> but with 2024, in all seriousness, we're going to see things escalating. We're going to see things that cause absolute terror. And in those moments, see it for what it is. Now, this is not to say, uh, like, oh, this is fake. It's a distraction. It's all staged. That has occurred. Okay, that has occurred. But don't you then be one of those people who's just now jumping to conclusions and you think you know everything. Because you were right one time about a conspiracy theory in one instance. You think you're now the go-to for all of these things. Nah. Mm-mm. <laughs> there are people who are really suffering. And you're detracting from people putting good energy their way. See, there's 2024 is going to be the year of corrections, correcting uh, for us as individuals. So some people, you know, if you've done really good soul work, you'll come into 2024. I just, I felt the experience. Let me see if I can put this into words. I just felt it coming in and it's just like someone turns on the light. And you're so attached to the struggle that you turn around to kind of grab the struggle because certainly I can't trust that things are going smoothly. Certainly I can't trust that I'm happy, right? Uh, I keep losing my voice, right? <laughs> um, I, I can't possibly trust that someone is a good friend. So people who've been through a lot and now you've come through these lessons, I think 2024 going into 2025 is going to be a big time of learning to trust. And that in and of itself is going to come with a lot of, uh, you know, mistakes, trusting the wrong people. Just don't let that throw you back into the struggle of, see, I knew people were awful. You're getting your sea legs again when it comes to trusting people, right? So that will occur for some. For others, especially uh, if you have been cruel to others, if you are somebody who's narcissistic, if you are somebody who uh, your empathy was so lost so long ago, I fear for you. But yeah, you're not supposed to stop. I'm letting you know. It's a time of reckoning. And I'm not going to say that, you know, as soon as 2024 hits, your whole life's going to fall apart. It's not going to look like, I mean, for some of you, it might look like that. But more than anything, all of your little tactics to control other people, you're going to lose control. And you know that's your biggest fear. So that's what this is. All of your insecurities, because you wouldn't act like that unless you were unbearably insecure those insecurities are going to be exposed it's your worst nightmare so for some of us who have learned to like well we make fools out of ourselves we just laugh about it and 
you know, move on. Like, <laughs> and we're just trying to be the best kind of person we can be and dealing with people like you along the way. Your whole facade is now crumbling and you will not have access to others anymore. And that's, in my opinion, the good thing about 2024. Now, unfortunately, we're in a very narcissistic world. So as this is occurring, you're going to see people um, lashing out, wanting to cause war because their ego is wounded, um, wanting to, and I'm not saying like even worldwide war, it could be war at your company, right? It could be war in the family. It could be war amongst friends, like just wanting, because they're, they've been exposed. They've been exposed. The enablers, you are going to feel so lost and so confused and so ungrounded. I'm concerned for you as well. I'm concerned for you as well, because when you don't have someone telling you who to be, if you actually have to look at your part and what you've done in enabling abusers, narcissists, sociopaths, like, and I absolutely, I've said this before, I'll say it again, I absolutely refuse to use the psychology, the psychology term of antisocial personality disorder. That alone in and of itself feels very manipulative. Sounds like someone wants to just chill on Netflix or something like it's, it's not cute. Okay. It's not cute. It's not funny. And, um, whether you like it or don't, I mean, we, when somebody says antisocial, it just feels like they don't want to be around people right now. doesn't mean they're a monster. Okay. So anyway, that's just my little two cents that you didn't ask for. Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but 2024 is going to be a very rough year. Um, I'm knocking things around. Sorry. A catastrophic year. Absolutely. But it's going to depend on your perceptions. Yes. So if you're, if you've been having for like years and years and years, like a lot of stuff, it's just like, I can't take one more thing. I understand. Okay. I understand. Again, I'm not promising for you all that 2024 is the absolute year of a breakthrough. It depends on your individual energy and what you came here to experience as a human. But in general, I think you're going to find that you're tying up loose ends. Some of those lessons are really landing now. And so, and it's going to be very immediate. I'm seeing this. Um, if you ever watch like reality shows, I know some of you are like, that's trash TV. It's a perfect human study. Okay. And you saying it's trash TV is judgmental and um, red flag behavior, quite frankly. Uh, so what I've noticed is like, I'll catch some of these reality shows and you can see like massive shifts in people who are living their lives out for everybody to see. So if you're somebody who has basically had your whole existence on taking advantage of others, making them believe certain things about you, that you are smart, that you are a savior, if you're like whatever, like whatever the thing is, it all falls apart for you. And some of you are going to have a hard time. It's, it's a year of recovery, I would say, for people who've been through it, um, whatever it is. Again, it comes down to your individual energy field and, and what, like I said before, what you came here to experience. But this is a time where nothing will be the same. And as you see things crumble that you are used to, this is hard to generalize and I don't, I don't know how else to put it though. accept it. We just had, as of the recording of this, major bank, I think it was like a, an attack or something. And I go into my little thing and it says, your deposits are going to be delayed. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Now, is that partly being desensitized? Maybe. But more than anything, it was observing that and going, well, I knew this was coming, right? We knew that this shift needed to occur. Because these things are happening to get our attention. And it's not just uh, attention about our banking system needs to be better. It's not just that, bro. Okay. <laughs> Where do I get this from? Um, it's not just that. It is understanding the emphasis we put on money. 
and how it runs us and how someone who maybe is pure hearted, a beautiful person, they, they just, you know, they're talented, they have a lot to offer and to contribute to this world. We'll get into a space maybe because they don't make a whole lot of money feeling like they're not good enough because a person's worth is based on their title and what they drive and right. Think about it. And their beauty. That's another thing too. You know, I get treated a lot better when I'm out with makeup than when I go out without makeup. Go ahead and make your jokes. Go ahead. <laughs> Rude. Okay, I know some of you will be like, well, <laughs> that's a testament to what your face looks like without, without the makeup. But I don't even think it's that. I think we get so, just going on that example, I think we get so used to seeing women in makeup that that's what makes people feel at peace. And I'm talking everybody, okay? Everybody. Everybody's nicer. Then when I'm, you know, when I'm without makeup, they just kind of overlook me, cut in front of me. I don't know. It's just a weird thing. Like, they don't see me, right? Those are some interesting things that are going to be coming up to the surface. I was questioning what do we put value on and how do we see a valuable human? Do we see someone as valuable when they're, again, contributing some beautiful work or some beautiful energy out into the world? Or are we putting people on a pedestal and saying, here, be something we can believe in. Be this, you know, absolutely ridiculous version of a human being that's not attainable for most people. And it's all, it's all a joke. I mean, it's all fake. It's all, you know, like those celebrities, their skins don't look like their skins. Their skin doesn't look like that. Okay, it, it's not, that's not really attainable. You feel me? So 2024 is going to be, yes, we might see some outward uh, deconstructing, um, but more it's deconstructing the dream, the dreamland we've been in and, and watching that fall down. If you are tempted to panic, <laughs> which I think you can choose to panic or not panic, it, when you start to panic, okay, take a breath. I'll probably be right there with you going, can you believe that just happened? Like, oh my gosh, you know, take a beat, take a breath. And no, the answer is not, well, we need the banking system to collapse so we can get back to the barter system. Everyone thinks that they, they've got the answer. <laughs> and I want to tell you right now, nobody has the answer. And, and especially those who would pretend to have the answer. Those are the last ones you want to be listening to, I'm telling you. You know, oh, well, you know, if you just grew your own fruits and vegetables, that would be, you know, that's what we're supposed to be doing. The world's falling apart to fall more in alignment with my beliefs and practices. That's all deconstructing, too. So is it a year of disappointments? Um, I think the word for this year is befuddled. Okay. <laughs> So that just happened, um, and I have to now examine myself and examine how I respond to that. Um, what deep-seated fear did that bring up? So if you're not somebody who can take accountability, you can't, you don't have any self-awareness. There's no self-actualization. There's just no understanding of the self. You're going to be in such a scramble. And guess what? We have to go to the grocery store with you. Okay, we have to be in there while you're freaking out because you can't find the right hot sauce. I understand. But because you can't find the right hot sauce, okay, having freakouts on everybody else. I have another example. Speaking of grocery stores, I just went to the grocery store. And uh, I went up to the self-checkout. I scanned something twice. And by accident. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm trying. And all of a sudden, I, uh, to me, it's the screen of death. An attendant is on their way. No, I don't want to talk to you. Just, I just need to take this off. Why do I need someone to come up and swipe their card and then go into this, like, what looks like DOS, okay? Like, this whole system to, like, <laughs> are you doing, are you coding right now, like, to take the duplicate off? What is happening? So, this, this girl comes over, and I have to say girl, she's probably about 18 years old, obnoxious. Oh, Melanta, she was obnoxious. I said it. I'll say it again. I'm going to call it out as it is first of all the little lights banging and bonging like because I, i've made a mistake <laughs> it's 
So that's happening. And then she comes over and, uh, like, she just stands and looks at it. She goes, what did you do? I scanned this twice. One of those needs to be taken off. You double scanned it? No. Okay. Comic relief? Sure. Okay. We can, but, <laughs> but we need to, why is she acting? Who are your parents? Where are you from? Okay. What was your neighborhood like? What school did you go to? I need information. Why are you like this? There's a lot of coddling too. And a lot of, uh, like I just, like I remember I was going through an experience with um, some people who tend to be younger and someone defended them by saying, oh, we got to remember like how hard things are for them. Ugh, the enabling obnoxious behavior, it's done. And that's why those girls hooting and hollering and she had to, I got to finish the story now, Russ. So sorry. But anyway, she brings over a manager and the manager is just, and I literally, I'm watching this. I'm getting annoyed, okay? I'm getting, I'm just trying to get my groceries. Just take the extra one off. That's it. That's all. That's all we're talking about right now. And I would have just moved on, except the call attendant thing came up and blocked my way, okay? Wouldn't let me leave. Wouldn't let me pay. Wouldn't let me do anything. But the manager comes over, and now they're standing there going, what happened? You scanned it twice. You scanned it twice. Oh, uh, uh, uh. finally, they go in there and the manager realizes that the uh, the staff person, I don't know what what her title is, but the staff person had already taken it off and she looks at her and she says, you already did it. Why did you call me over here? And she goes, I did. I'm a success. That's one for today. Duh. Go, why, ah. <laughs> Gen Z. You, you might be in for a rough ride. Oh, you're such a boomer. Okay, quit calling everybody boomers. I guess from an astrological standpoint, I'm technically a zennial between Gen X and millennials. Um, but from like the mainstream, I'm Gen X and we're not doing it. We're at capacity. Okay. We won't. <laughs> So basically what I'm saying here is 2024 is going to be a year of the victim, okay? Um, and real victims are not going to be getting the attention they deserve and the help they deserve because there are just going to be people out there victimizing themselves and taking up air, basically, and distracting. And this is how darkness works. They will it's a it's a subtle manipulation i mean it's not so subtle to most of us but there is a manipulation going on there where the person does think that oh you know i have it worse than anybody else in this world and then they go around in the world treating people a certain way demanding attention and it's draining on people who you know do care and then you have enablers who are just utterly lost and they don't know who to believe and they it, that has its own condition behind it where you take on the identity of whoever you're around <laughs> yeah that, there's a term for that okay i as a as a non-psychologist non-therapist -thera non-professional in that area i'm not allowed to talk about it so but anyway um from a spiritual standpoint uh this is don't 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 panic when you see things coming down it's like striking the set the show's over it's done it's done now what that looks like later on um it's going to be the rebuilding phase and we're going to have to step by step start to rebuild but we're gonna i think we're gonna have a lot of uh sliding backwards right because we're gonna make the mistake of trying to rebuild things as they once were that's not gonna work and then we're gonna try to rebuild things but trying to correct some of the problems, that's not going to work. We are not the same beings. So there will be a very necessary moment to figure out who we are now, what our needs are now, what kind of world are we living in now, and then creating from that standpoint. Okay. Leave your questions down below, your comments, and we'll take it from there. This is just a, an overview if I need to make more videos around this, I uh, will. Okay, so I love you guys. Take care.